Another important part of a mixer is what is referred to sometimes as the auxiliary sends or sometimes called the effects sends. And on this mixer, we can see right here there are two extra knobs that determine each channel has an auxiliary send control or uh, sometimes called effects sends. Up here, when we look at these uh, output uh, uh, inputs or outputs, we see stereo auxiliary return and auxiliary send number one and two. So what you can do on this is if you plug a, here again, a quarter inch phone plug into the auxiliary send channel, we can then take, let's say, microphone number one, which is plugged in here. If I want to send that information to auxiliary output send channel one, I can open up and here you can control the gain of that. It'll, it will get mixed into auxiliary send channel one, which is here. So I can then send that to somewhere else. And there are a lot of places that we would do with that information which you would find often in, in sort of older days when we're using hardware configuration, you might want to send that to a separate equalizer where you then adjust the, the balance, not use this equalizer, maybe have a better one that you could have that sound sent to, have it changed according to the equalization, and then the, coming off the hardware equalizer, you would bring the output of that back into the auxiliary returns, and then it would get mixed in with the output signal. So that way you could actually uh, have reverb units or any kind of effects, and that's why they're sometimes called effects sends. So you would send that signal to some kind of effects box. And we'll talk about effects a little bit later in the course, where we get into gates, uh, flange, reverb, uh, delays, compressors, expanders, all sorts of, of changes that, to the audio signal that we can do. But that's what this is for, is that maybe I only want the microphone number one to be sent to that particular effects box, but not the other one. So that way you can control uh, which ones and how much actually go to that and then come back into the mixer through uh, auxiliary turns. For sound reinforcement purposes, the auxiliary send will have multiple purposes. Uh, you may also go to a reverb unit or some other kind of effects in a uh, sound reinforcement, but primarily your auxiliary sends are going to be sending this particular information to monitors on stage. So you know in a sound reinforcement uh, configuration, uh, sound reinforcement is actually a very sort of complicated uh, setup. Often you will have three different systems of amplification going on on stage. So the normal sound reinforcement configuration, you have your stage speakers. The stage speakers will then be facing the audience. Usually they're on the sides of the performers, not behind the performers because you're going to get potential feedback, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So your stage speakers are the ones that the audience is hearing. They're on the side of the other stage musicians. <clears throat> but the musicians need to be able to hear each other on stage. So often you will see another set of speakers. <clears throat> it's a whole other configuration of speakers that are pointing back toward the musicians so that they can hear each other on stage. They don't need to be hearing what the audience is hearing, but they need to be able to hear uh, specifically what they need to to be able to play together. And that's called a monitor system. So let's say I've got a singer on stage. <clears throat> and she's, she or he is trying to sing along on this composition, they need to be able to hear the keyboard player to be able to get the full chord and to be able to get the tuning of that. That particular singer doesn't really need to hear the trumpets, doesn't need to really hear the, the bass player that much, they just need to hear the keyboard. So what I can do is I could have multiple auxiliary uh, send channels, and that's why in a really good uh, a sound reinforcement mixer, you would want anywhere from eight to 12 different auxiliary sends. So I could take that, that this, let's say this is my uh, a vocalist here, and over here I have the keyboard plugged into here. So what I would do is I would take the keyboard, send it to our auxiliary uh, send channel 1, which would then be going to that monitor plugged into the vocalist. The monitor can be on the stage, where a separate monitor facing back. Today, more often than not, you will find wireless monitors which are being plugged into a little earphone in their uh, ear. So that's more common, and you don't have to have these big banks of speakers down on the floor. So if you have wireless monitors, you can just have them in the ear. But it's, it's the same principle, where that auxiliary SIN 1, that's, that keyboard, is being sent to the vocalist monitor through an auxiliary SIN channel so that they can hear that stronger. And the bass and all the other instruments will be reduced in that so they don't need to hear that. Conversely, the bass player or the drummer needs to be able to hear the bass player because they need to be in sync. They're the sort of the foundation of the composition. So the bass players, you would, the auxiliary send channel two, you would send that to the drummer's uh, uh, headset so that they would be hearing mainly the bass player. They don't need to hear the vocalist that much. They just need to be able to hear the sort of rhythm instruments. So that's why auxiliary sends are critical for being able to have a group play together. 
I mentioned in, in sound reinforcement, there are three different systems often in play. So when a sound engineer is mixing sound reinforcement, you're doing the stage speakers, which you're trying to balance and make sure you don't get feedback. You're trying to get the right sound, uh, uh, mixing throughout the whole hall. Then you're trying to get these multiple monitors all having the right level of mix going back to the musicians so they can play together. And then many times you'll have a third level of amplification, which is your guitar amplifiers. So often you will see a guitarist who prefers to have their particular Fender amp or whatever design they want. And often the sound engineer has to put a microphone in front of that amplifier because they can't just plug directly into the mixer because they want that particular quality of that amplifier sound into the sound of the guitar. So then you have to transfer the sound of that uh, amplifier, that Fender guitar amplifier, record it and mix it correctly into that. So in some ways the way we do sound reinforcement is a very sophisticated uh, sort of multiple problems can emerge in that. And so a good sound en engineer sort of understands all those three different systems and how they have to operate together. And so the mixing console is where all this is going to happen. So the, the auxiliary sins are, to me, one of the most important parts of the mixer, as well as getting your preamp set. But, but this allows you then to color the sound with effects processing or add different qualities to it, but also to in, in sound reinforcement to allow for the musicians to hear each other. Down at the bottom of each of these channels, you always have the same kind of information. Uh, this is a, it's a potentiometer. Most mixers, larger mixers, will have a slide fader. It does the same thing. It, it amplifies or attenuates the electrical signal. Uh, this one, just for smaller purposes, you can have just that potentiometer rather than a slide fader. So this is what we call the volume control or the final gain. So remember, the preamp gain does the same thing. It allows for us to uh, how much signal gets preamp preamplified and then this is going to determine the final mixing of that how much of that goes to the outputs on the back so the final gain is your final mixing of that and here again you want to get that as as uh, you know each of these would be set differently according to how much information is coming in and, and what kind of mix that you want in, re in professional recording studios usually you will have a specialist who will come in, and usually, usually they're called a tone meister. A tone meister is someone who's a specialist in knowing how to record sound and put the exact kind of effects processing on it and do the exact kind of mixing it to make it sound really, really great for uh, commercial purposes. So when you hear an artist that you hear on your uh, downloaded uh, sound file, whether it's Coldplay or Lady Gaga, whoever, they usually will have one sound artist, that uh, one tone meister, who comes in to do the final mix because the exact mixing level, how much sound goes to a gate, how much goes to a reverb or a delay, all of that information is a very subtle art form. And a tone meister is someone who specializes in creating a particular kind of quality of sound that, that each artist will try to have a, a world of sound that is unique to them. So that's why, whether it's Madonna or Lady Gaga, they will have a sound artist that's trying to shape an identifiable quality of sound to that artist, not just the quality of the voice, but to the effects and everything around them. And that's what the tone, art, tone meister is designed to do. But it's being done at the mixing board. So it's not just simple mixing. It's really coloring the sound through the use of all these effects processing and the use of how much gain quality and the kind of preamps you use. All that is, is determining uh, the, the subtleties of those, those kind of level artists. We won't be getting to that level of subtlety in this course, but just to let you know that when you, when you go into professional studios, they will have racks and racks of equipment that a different tone artist would mix differently to design a particular quality of sound for that, that particular artist's uh, unique identity of sound. So these are the input channels coming in. When we come over here, we see the sort of the master output configuration. And this is where we can see the master level for auxiliary one, auxiliary two. So we saw that we could uh, individually send to auxiliary one. We could then have a master control for how much goes out to auxiliary one overall. So you have a sort of individual control and then a master control for that. Same thing in auxiliary two. And then here we have just routing. Uh, there are actually a couple more outputs on the back here. There's a control room output. So if we were in a recording studio, you may want to be sending your master outputs into a computer to record the sound, but you may need to hear the sound in the studio at the same time. So you'd have a control room out. So we could mix the signal to the control room, and then you'd have another volume control for the control room, but then your master output volume would be controlling how much goes to the master outputs, which goes to your, mix, to your recording device. So that way you'll have multiple ways of sending the information to wherever it needs to go for people to be able to hear it or monitor it, and then uh, to the to recording area separately. So that's what usually mixers will have multiple uh, configurations of this. Now I mentioned this is a 12-channel input 
and a two-channel output. So when you look at a mixer, often you will see uh, can different configurations. This is a very simple mixer, uh, but often you will find 24, 48, 72 channels of input. And so you'll see these big long mixers with lots of fader inputs. They're basically having the same kind of uh, functions there. But most of your more expensive mixers will have a different kind of output. So the output could be 2, 4, 8, 16, 24. So if you want 16 different channels of output, that means you can assign everything to, to 16 different outputs that can go into 16 different channels in your uh, uh, computer program, or it could go to 16 different speakers, or all sorts of reasons. So the, the, as you get into the larger mixers, you're probably going to have uh, different combinations. You'll have what's called, for example, if you see something that's a 24, by an 8 by 2. If you see a mixture that has that underneath, that means that there's 24 inputs and then you can send that to either 8 channels and 2 channel outputs. So you can mix it into 8 channels separately or you can also combine that into a 2 channel stereo output. So every mixer will have a 2 channel, but many mixers will give you 4, 8, or 16 outputs as well as that. So this is the, the simple design of a mixer, but as we get into more complicated mixers, it will pretty much be the same. Uh, soon I will ask you to download some software uh, mixers and so we will talk about how to actually bring the sound in to our computer with microphones and then we'll be mixing the sound in the software but it will look very similar to what we're doing here as far as the functions of our mix window in that. So next, next unit we're going to be talking about uh, sort of MIDI and how MIDI instrument uh, will sort of change the way we communicate uh, with devices going into the electronics and that's a, that's a whole kind of exciting world which we'll be talking about next. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.